The San Diego Gulls have not let COVID-19 defeat them. We'll take you back to how the players learned the season was put on hold. Instead of taking time off, the team and its business partners join forces to spread goodwill throughout the region. And from Finland to right here, close to home, we'll take you to your favorite Gulls. All now on Gulls All Access, presented by Cal Coast Credit Union. Welcome to Gulls All Access. I'm Andy Zilch. We begin this episode by going back to the final games of the regular season. The Gulls were peaking at the right time, scoring, hitting, and leading their way into what would have been a great playoff run. Blues toe drag, then a shot, rebound, Comtois scores! Gulls win in overtime! The Gulls' final game of the season wrapped up a team record seven game road trip. After starting the season 0-6, the Gulls led the Pacific Division in wins and point percentage after New Year's. That win over first place Tucson showed just how far the team had come. And they seal it with a 4-2 victory against the Tucson Roadrunners. How good does it feel to end that road trip like that? Yeah, um, you know, that's, that's a really big win for, for this team. Uh, I mean, ever since I've got here, I haven't played a home game yet. We've been on the road, and um, I, I think it's seven games now or something like that. So um, it's been a long stand for us, and I think, you know, there were some good games, there were some ugly games, but overall I think we battled hard, and, you know, every game is different. And, and to end against, um, especially against Tucson, and, and get two points and, and end the trip like that, it's, it's, uh, it's nice for everyone, and, and everyone feels good about themselves coming back home now. I thought as a unit, our D really played solid. Uh, for the most part, we held them off on the power play, and uh, uh, that was a big uh, turning point in the game. It was also a turning point in the season. That was the night the NBA announced the cancellation of two games because a player had tested positive for COVID-19. Due to unforeseen circumstances, the game tonight has been postponed. What should have been a happy goals locker room was a bit subdued. Someone uh, kind of came in the room and said, hey, like they just uh, canceled uh, an, N an NBA game saying one of the players uh, has the virus. So we were like, wow, like what, uh, what does this mean? Like, I, who, like we, we didn't really understand what was going on, but at the same time, we're like, this can't be good. You know, this is, uh, this, this is happening way too fast. Usually after a game like that, we'll get back to the hotel and when we travel early the next day, guys will get to bed. But there was a big group of us that stayed up and played cards and, and kind of just sat around and spent time with each other. And you could almost feel like, hey, this, this might be the last time we get together like this for a long time and and that turned out to be the case so um i'm glad that we definitely have those memories but yeah it's just it's one of those things that um you know you, you really just can't put it into words because there's just so much unknown all of a sudden uh, uh reality set in and we did uh, all realize that uh, there was going to be some major changes not only in our profession but in our lives the goals returned to san diego confident and with a much welcome homestand on the calendar but those games would not be played. When we were traveling back from uh, Tucson, our last games, uh, we were kind of in the airport just talking as a group. And uh, we had won a, a, a big game the night before and, and against a really good team. And, you know, we felt really good about our game, probably the last like 25, 30 games and really moving in the right direction. And uh, you're getting to that fun part of the year where uh, every play and every time the puck's on your stick, it, it really matters. So um, that was, you know, probably that, that's probably what makes it hardest because we were just kind of getting to that point where we're starting to win games. We're starting to beat really good teams and we're doing it consistently and finding that consistency for us at the beginning of the year was almost impossible. And we worked really hard to get it. And, and you know, unfortunately, uh, we don't know if we're going to be rewarded. Up next, with no games to play, the Gulls ramped up their already robust community efforts. And later, we'll take you to the guys' homes to let you know what they're up to. 
we go to break with a reminder. Follow your favorite team online at sandiegogulls.com and on Twitter and Facebook. We'll be right back as Goals All Access, presented by California Coast Credit Union, continues. San Diego Gulls Hockey is presented by California Coast Credit Union, San Diego's oldest financial institution with over 25 branch locations, a shared branch network of 60 area locations, and 30,000 free ATMs nationwide. Welcome back. From ownership to players, front office staff, coaches, and dedicated fans of the San Diego Gulls, the organization is dedicated to giving back to the community that supports them. So what has the team done since the pandemic began? The Gulls have joined forces with great partners to give back even more. San Diego Gulls have a responsibility to make sure that we're giving back to San Diego. Uh, we do our job entertaining the crowds when we're playing hockey, but in times like this when the community is really hurting and they really need help, that's why we have our San Diego Gulls Foundation. I look at um, the extension of the Anaheim Ducks and what they're doing in the community in Orange County. What we're doing down here in San Diego is establishing those same fundamentals to make sure that when there's an issue in our community, in our county, we're giving back. Our efforts truly start from the top. I'm so proud of what our ownership, Henry and Susan Samuelli, have done for the San Diego community. Throughout this process, everybody has been impacted, whether it's a small business, large business, all of us are feeling this. Our ownership group took it upon themselves to make sure that all 2,100 of our part-time employees, and that ranges from local rinks, Anaheim Ducks, San Diego Goals, all of those employees are gonna be paid through the end of June. They wanna make sure that while we're all going through this troublesome time, that finances are not something that you have to worry about. Over the past five years, the San Diego Goals Foundation has been hosting events, doing jersey auctions, and finding ways to raise money for the San Diego community. Because of the global pandemic, this is a perfect opportunity for us to activate our foundation. So what we decided to do is take some of our San Diego Goals Foundation dollars and use our local partners to serve meals to frontline workers. We have so many great partners that are food vendors or local restaurants that have been hit really hard by this pandemic. We wanted to do stuff right from the very beginning, we just didn't know how. And then when the Gauls came to us and said, would we be interested in, in helping out? I mean, that was perfect. That just, it worked out perfect for us. We didn't know how to do it, you guys did. Yeah, we'll do the food. You guys show us how to get it to them and help out. So we've done it a couple of times now, um, ready to do it again. I'd like to do it a few more times at least. So what we wanted to do is use our foundation dollars to buy safely packaged meals, individually packaged meals, and then deliver them to five local hospitals in San Diego County. The goal is to take care of these workers that are working tirelessly on the front lines while also helping our local partners from the San Diego Goals. It's just important for everybody to help everybody out. I mean, these people are on the front lines. I mean, they're giving their lives up. It's tremendous the amount of, of what they're doing to help out with this pandemic. As we were putting the plan together, our players reached out and asked if they could help out as well. Uh, within a day, we had thousands of dollars raised from our players. They took money out of their own pocket to make sure that they were helping in this initiative, and we were able to serve 800 meals to local healthcare professionals. That's something we're really proud of and something that's gonna continue throughout the summer and throughout this entire pandemic. Most of the country kind of lives during the day and sleeps at night, um, the goals delivered uh, meals to our night shift. And they, you know, a lot of times the night shift doesn't get those, those meals. So they were very grateful, so excited to get the meals. And they, they raved about, it. they talked about it over and over again that the goals gave them a meal at, you know, during their night shift. Cook for those doctors. I, I can't tell you how much that meant to us and, and to my kids and to see you know you know daddy's going to work and daddy's going going to feed the first responders and the goals paid for that like how like that left an impression on my children and I, I can't tell you that's going to last a lifetime. We serve breakfast and coffee to all 75 San Diego police dispatchers at the San Diego Police Department headquarters in recognition of Dispatchers Week, a gesture to first responders working in key communication positions to help keep our city safe during this unprecedented time. As our efforts continued throughout the month of April, 
we got a call from Radies Children's Hospital. Radies has been a partner of ours for a number of years, and we've done so much with them in the community. We send our players to the hospital to interact with the families and the kids that are going through such a tough time. We also partner with them on the outdoor rink at Liberty Station. This is a partnership that we're really proud of, and when they reached out, we knew we wanted to make sure we got together with them. So we, we used our foundation dollars, and we purchased 30 gallons of hand sanitizer to give to Rady Children's Hospital. This is something that's really needed. It's not just for the frontline workers. These are for the, the kids that are in the hospital, their family that are regularly visiting them. This is a really important need, so we were able to donate 30 gallons of hand sanitizer, and it made a real impact for one of our primary partners. This is definitely something we needed, and uh, it's wonderful to have our partners coming through. Forward, four blues, forwards. Four blues. At this point, our coaches reached out and they wanted to get involved. They saw the great work that we were doing with Rady Children's Hospital and they knew that Ronald McDonald House was one of the initiatives at Rady's. They have a real close connection with the Ronald McDonald House because through their playing careers, all of our coaches have had some involvement with Ronald McDonald House. As the pandemic has changed many organizations, Ronald McDonald House has had to transition to providing all to go meals both in the house for day visitors, and there has been a need for assistance to providing breakfast, lunch, and dinner each day. Our coaches went back to Surfside Deli with their own funds, purchased meals for those families to support them in this time of need. This is such a great initiative because there's so many people that are impacted by this that are not just frontline workers and not people that are fighting the virus. Well, there's families and there's children and there's neighbors that are all supporting, so serving meals to them was really important. What we did is we said, is there anybody out there that would love to buy a gift certificate? 25, 50, $100? Could, could you buy it, not for yourself, but for somebody else? To date, we've raised over $30,000. We've fed almost 3,000 people. If you're in that position to help, please give us a call. Or if you just want to support a place like ours, please come here, buy a sandwich, buy one for your neighbor. We have dinners to go. That's what we're donating, $25 for two people. Uh, you know, buy one for yourself, buy one for your neighbor. There's people out there that need help, and, and we have gourmet food to be able to, to bring to them and warm their heart. Five years ago, when we heard the Gulls were going to come back in town, they were relocating a franchise, we were very excited. We quickly learned through meeting the great people with the Gulls that they were just as committed to this community and serving this community as we were. They weren't just here as a sports franchise, they were here as a community organization and a, a really a pillar in, in the community. We worked with the Goals and served lunches to our great workers at the VA clinic here in Mission Valley. So that was another thing that we hadn't done in the past, but we thought it was important to support those first responders, those frontline workers. Calco's Credit Union has been there for all five years since the San Diego Goals have been back and they have been a real strong partner to make sure that our foundation is strong and everything we do in the community is well done and well supported. So if you're already contributing to a foundation or a not-for-profit organization, continue to do so and look for other ways that you might be able to help. And you can certainly work with us on that. You can go to calcocu.org. You can find our COVID-19 page and click on that button and you can contribute to our small business relief fund. They have been so great to work with. They've been great giving back. And it's something that I'm really proud to say that they are our presenting partner. The Goals have always supported San Diego and we're committed to being a leader in the San Diego community for the long term. How old are you? They delivered more than 775 individual meals to the staff at five local hospitals. Our meals, all the meals were packaged individually with utensils to make sure our healthcare providers could enjoy them safely. So what an incredible example of San Diego organizations, both big and small, stepping up to lend a helping hand when it's needed most. So thank you to Henry and Susan Samueli, as well as the Goals President of Operations Matt Savant for supporting our local businesses and helping our health care providers. The stories that will be, I, I, they're just endless and I, I, it just touches my heart that the community came together to support these families. So I want to say thank you to all of you that have been part of our foundation over the last five years. Thank you to our partners and to our fans. This is our time to shine. This is our time to step up for San Diego. Thank you for everything you've done for us.
you'd like to join the Gulls in helping the less fortunate, go to sandiegogulls.com slash donate now. Up next, the players have gone home, but we track them down everywhere from the OC to Europe. They let us know how they're spending their time next as Gulls All Access presented by California Coast Credit Union continues right after this. Gulls Elite is a new season ticket experience for Gulls fans, providing personalized a la carte experiences for each individual account to create a unique membership. Members receive the largest discounts on ticket pricing, a dedicated account representative, free parking, an exclusive member entrance, merchandise discounts, and much more. To learn about the benefits of becoming a Gulls Elite member, visit sandiegogulls.com slash Gulls Elite. Well, as we've learned, life doesn't stop because of a global pandemic. Some of the Gulls players have welcomed new babies, returned to their roots, and even picked up new hobbies. They've certainly kept busy, and we're going to take an inside look on what the guys have been doing lately. Okay, well, uh, I'm in La Mirada, California. Um, decided it'd be best to leave San Diego, obviously, um, being we weren't really allowed to go to the facilities, and um, a lot of the other boys uh, went home, so... Decided to be best and safest uh, to go back home with my parents. So um, back living with my first ever roommates, uh, my mom and my dad. So um, good laundry, good food, um, all that is, uh, is set. So that's good. And um, I got a good little setup um, here. If I could switch this around just in the garage where I can kind of get some work done. Got uh, all the essentials that I really need, I guess, to um, stay fit and, and stay conditioned and ready to go just in case. Here's like our little horse area where the miniature donkeys and miniature horses um, get to go around and eat grass all day. And that's Orion and that's Rad hiding behind him. Ansel. Hi. This is Sophie. Hi, Ansel. They're both uh, miniature donkeys. I know growing up, uh, probably a lot of my friends thought it was a little weird that I had uh, all these pets and stuff, but um, I kind of just grew up with it. My mom uh, is, a, is a big time animal lover. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool and, and it's fun. It's a good good place to be quarantined, I guess, with all these animals keep me busy and uh, it's just a little bit of uh, entertainment for sure. Ansel, say bye. We gotta see the rest of the dogs. Come on. From California to Finland, we caught up with Yanni Hakenpa. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 8 o'clock, uh, 8 o'clock p.m. here. Uh, the sun is starting to set and uh, yeah, uh, a little different out here than in uh, San Diego. We have to put a little more clothes on when you come outside, but but uh, uh, it's been good. I, I know in your off time, you really like cooking too, so I'm sure that you've really gotten a knack for that lately, right? <laughs> yeah, there's uh, a lot of time at home, so a lot of time to cook. So I've been trying to, uh, trying to do something a little different now. Uh, find some new recipes to to work on. Uh, trying to search the internet for some good ones, and it's sure been fun. There's it seems like all the house chores right now are more interesting than ever. Doing way more vacuuming than ever before. So, so I guess that's a good thing. Chris Mueller and his wife welcomed another child. My wife delivered her at um, in Jacobs here in La Jolla, and they did an unbelievable job. The nurses, the doctors, and we couldn't have felt more safe and, and relaxed and the whole birth went amazing. Probably our, our easiest one, to be honest with you. And, and it was, it was awesome. We just bought a house over right around Christmas time up in on the lake here in New Hampshire. And, um, my wife came, she left early, um, and moved in here. And then when I got back here, we started moving all the furniture and stuff. And so it's, it's kept us busy, but, uh, it's been fun. And your wife is, is also pregnant too. So how's that going along with, uh, with your first one that you're going to be expecting soon? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a fun time. It's, it's definitely crazy. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun. We actually just built, um, we ordered some stuff for our, our extra room, like our guest room, we turned it into a nursery and we just built the, I built the crib today and we built the chair and there's a rug in there. So it's, it's coming along nice, but She's doing well, um, holding up. She's, she's healthy. She, um, she's doing good. So uh, we're, we're definitely excited. 
Now, are you normally a handyman or have you turned into a handyman? <laughs> you got the house and now you've had to build a crib and all that. My family would definitely say that I'm not a handyman. Um, growing up, I, I, I never really had a knack for it, but I, I can't, I mean, I, I'm good at following directions, so it's not too hard for me. In Toronto, the Carricks are embracing family time. Yeah, it's been good. Uh, you know, obviously it's nice getting to spend uh, a lot of time with, with my kid, um, especially in the mornings when, you know, he seems to be his happiest in the mornings and stuff. So that's, that's fun to, you know, hang out with him. And he's starting to walk now. Uh, he actually turns one uh, a week today. So that's, that's exciting. But we're lucky. We, we got, uh, you know, some property and we actually, our house backs onto some conservation land. So we're able to go outside. Um, you know, today's a beautiful day here too. So I, I'm sitting outside right now and uh, it's still a little brisk, but uh, you know, it's, it's that cool time of year where I don't really get to enjoy too much because I'm usually uh during hockey season so uh it's just a, it's very different um but obviously we wish we were playing hockey right now well the past few months have been challenging for everyone but none more so than the medical professionals on the front lines of the COVID-19 crisis we want to extend our sincere gratitude and appreciation for those sacrifices we leave you with a message of appreciation from our players to those hard-working professionals hi guys this is Justin Clues with the San Diego Gulls just want to forward a massive thank you to all the doctors, nurses, and healthcare providers that are battling this coronavirus front on. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all the doctors and nurses, uh, healthcare workers, uh, risking their lives and going to work every day to make sure everybody else is safe and healthy. We're comforted in knowing that we have the most dedicated members of our community fighting for the health and well-being of all those affected. I have nothing but respect for you and, and just wanted to say thank you. So this is a token of our appreciation. I uh, just want to say stay safe and thank you very much. We're all bit one big team right now and you guys are really the all-star. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys soon. Uh, stay home, stay safe, and uh, together we'll beat this virus.